Let's go to Amy in Texas. First time caller. Welcome, Amy. Your thoughts today. Hi there. Good morning. Um, This is the first time that I've called in. I've listened to your show several times, and I did vote for Trump. Um, I've been on on hold for quite a bit of time, so not not complaining, just letting you know that my comment might not line up with what you've just been speaking of. But I just wanted to say— Yeah, you've been on hold a long time because we've got— the lines are full. So that, that does tend to happen when you call a show like this. Go right ahead. Um, I'm so glad to be a part of it. But I just wanted to say, um, I know this probably won't be well received by, by most of your listeners, but um, I did vote for Trump. I do disagree on a few of the things on Project 2025. I just want to let you know, I really wish that guys would uh, go out there and just really dig in deep to the endorsement that Trump has not given to Project 2025. Uh, the Heritage Foundation that wrote that, that created that document, is um, they're definitely very right, very far right. Um, I believe that their projections were not aligned at all with most of the Republican view or the conservative view or even the moderate view. Uh, we have most of the, um, you know, transitional people that have come from the Libertarian Party and, and the other moderate people and even a lot of the Democrats, uh, conservatives. So, so I, I just, I, I just, I'm, 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 I wanted to give you opportunity to speak, but, but just for time's sake, I, I'm, I'm just going to pause it here. Um, I, I, you may be aware that on January 23rd, 2018, the Heritage Foundation put out a report that discussed the fact that the Trump administration had embraced uh, the Heritage Foundation's policies. And just one year after office, says the Heritage Foundation, uh, they have embraced over two-thirds of the policy recommendations from the Heritage Foundation's mandate for for leadership. What you may not know is that the Heritage Foundation has been putting forward these mandates for leadership ever since the era of Ronald Reagan. And uh, these mandates have been largely accepted and implemented to the tune of more than two-thirds of them, more than 64% of the policy prescriptions uh, that the mandate for leadership from the Heritage Foundation put forward in Donald Trump's first administration, he wholesale embraced and implemented. Um, We we study Project 2025 here. We've been studying it for over a year. Uh, We've looked at Agenda 47. Um, so you may be new to this topic, but we are not new to this. You may be new to us, but we are true to this. And so what is important is for us to be clear about facts. And what we know about Agenda 47 is that there is such significant overlap with the principles and the mandates of Project 2025 that it's six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. And you can you can Google comparison. You, you can do this. I encourage you to do it on your own because a lot of folks are, are now sort of rooting in a, uh, well, you guys don't really know things and, and you should really study more. But, but we, we do study here. This is a, a very knowledgeable audience. Um, and so Project Agenda 47, as a reminder for those of you who've heard this ad nauseum, because again, um, our caller is new to this, but we are true to this. Uh, the Agenda 47 videos um, are largely part and parcel of what they're going to be doing with the Project 2025 America. There's very, they're, they're, so what you're speaking to, uh, my dear, is a distinction without a difference. What you're speaking to are two different names that describe the same general ethos. So uh, just like in uh, uh, Project 2025, Donald Trump's proposals for uh, K-12 schools include cutting the, the Department of Education. It includes eliminating any ed- real history uh, t- education on black history. Uh, it includes firing teachers who do not demonstrate sufficient embrace of patriotic values. Uh, it includes uh, making it easier to expel children uh, from schools. It makes it easier to cut funding and programs to keep children who have a lot of challenges um, from getting access to what they need. Uh, we know that when it comes to universities, Agenda 47 is talking about getting rid of accreditation bodies uh, for colleges and universities and instead creating ones that are only in in agreement with a white Christian nationalist view of the world. Uh, we know that when it comes to climate change, Agenda 47 would have the United States leave the Paris Accord. And we know that the for, uh, former President Trump, President-elect, has also said that he wants to get rid of all of Joe Biden's policies that restrict emissions and, and which target more than two-thirds of new vehicles to be electric. So he's canceling all of the climate change uh, proposals that uh, have been put forward. We know that when it comes to Agenda 47 and the Justice Department, uh, that he has said that he's going to appoint 100 U.S. attorneys who would be Trump sycophants and who would employ a uh, 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 white Christian nationalist view of the legal system, that they would fire those prosecutors that they think are not sufficiently Trump loyalists. We know that when it comes to uh, crime, that Donald Trump has talked about uh, hiring and retaining police officers who have violated and have been known violators of, of civil rights for the people for whom they are policing. We know that they plan to nationalize stop and frisk. We know that they plan to provide full immunity, much the same within 40, Agenda 47 and Project 2025. They are 
virtually in full alignment when it comes to immigration. Uh, when it comes to the economy, just like in Project 2025, Agenda 47 says we're going to cut taxes, we're going to slash federal regulations, and we're going to also include tariffs, which means Americans are going to be paying more for all of their groceries so that billionaires can pay less for their products. When it comes to health care, Agenda 47 is requiring federal agencies uh, to buy medicines and medical devices um, and no longer be able to negotiate for drug uh, prescription drug cost cuts. And so, you know... Six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. The House has already introduced on the night of the election a plan in alignment with Agenda 47 and Project 2025 to defund Social Security and Medicare. When it comes to foreign policy and defense, we know that Donald Trump wants to do the same thing through Project uh, Project 2025 as he does with Agenda 47. So while I appreciate your, your ability to feel like there is some great difference there, we are a learned people here. We are a people who study here. We don't just move off of emotion and willy nilly and we don't just listen to a show a few times and then decide to call in and try to correct people who've been in this space and doing this work, not just on these airwaves, but on the ground for far longer than you even knew of our existence. So while I appreciate your effort and I'm so glad that you are confident that you're going to be okay. I'm Godspeed. Good luck to you. I hope you and your people, y'all figure it out. And, and when your jobs get cut and your bonuses get cut, because now you're going to have a 20% tariff on everything. And when your groceries and everything that you said that you wanted to, to vote for in terms of the eco- economy, and not just you specifically, but I mean, people who, who have called with similar commentary, good luck to you. When your health care plans are cut, when your kids can no longer be on your health care until they're 26 and they're cut off at 18, when everyone who's had COVID is now considered to have a pre-existing condition and can now be removed from their health care again, good luck to you. I hope it works out. I hope you are fine when they start closing down schools and when there's no more child care money because they want to cut child care in both Project 2025 and Agenda 47. I hope that works out for you because we're going to be okay because we know what it is to navigate this space. Y'all don't, but you're going to find out. And you'll be okay when you do. But thank you so much for calling and giving us a chance to walk through some of the distinctions and and the far more things that are in common between Project 2025 and Agenda 47. We wish you all the best, Amy. Godspeed.